State may call your next witness. From the state calls Lisa Baker. Would you state your full name for the court, please? Lisa Baker. Thank you. And Ms. Baker, you've previously testified, and today you're going to provide uh, the court with an impact statement. Is that correct? Yes. And do you have that prepared statement in your hand? I do. And would you read that for us, please? I want to start by saying that my ability to control my emotions should in no way reflect how much I love my husband. I've had three long, three long years to grieve and understand that no matter what is said, nothing will bring him back to me. It feels like yesterday and forever go at the same time. I used to believe in the good in the world and that bad things only happen to bad people. I used to be the person that thought, no matter what, everything will just work out. I used to say things like, everything happens for a reason, and God will never give me more than I can handle. All of that and all of those pieces of who I thought I was, that is all gone. Any picture of what I had hoped my life, our life to be, is now gone. My life and our daughter's life can never be the same and we are reminded daily of the depth of his absence. The pain I feel when my child cries, cries out for her daddy is heartbreaking, but I have to be the strong one, and that is so hard. Every girl deserves a good father, and she had a great one. There are so many ways that this life is unfair. Daniel was the very best of the best and so much more than I ever thought I deserved. He was honorable, true, and I love with all your heart kind of guy. There was just no way he could have predicted the outcome of the storm that he willingly ran toward when answering what ultimately was his last call. I believe he was always prepared to do whatever job he was called to do, but no one could have been prepared for what happened that day. I'm truly lost without him. He worked hard every day to be the best husband, father, leader, and human that he possibly could. He helped many strangers and never expected anything in return. He tried to promote good and always lead by example. I have begged many times for God to let me trade places with him, not because I wish to die, but because Daniel deserves to live. This world would be a better place with Daniel in it. Meredith, our baby girl, our precious little girl that has been forced to grow up without her daddy. Meredith was just 22 months old at the time. She was just starting to say, I love you, and put words into sentences. And now she is five, and her questions are many. All that I have been able to explain to her so far is that Daddy was working, and he went to help someone, got hurt, and was unable to make it to the doctor. She believes that her Daddy is a hero, and that every American flag, eagle, and police badge are all just for her daddy. Since his death, Meredith searches the sky every night for the moon so she can blow her daddy kisses and tell him that she loves and misses him. Then at bedtime, she calls her daddy on her Minnie Mouse play phone to tell him about her day and say goodnight. She knows that he lives in heaven, but doesn't quite understand that he is never coming back. That he will never be here to hold her, to kiss her, to watch her grow, to offer fatherly advice, to walk her down the aisle, to meet his grandchildren, 
to do any of the things that a father would, could, and or should be here to do. All that remains are the pictures, a few videos, and many stories of the great man that I know undoubtedly would have given her the world. The true impact cannot be measured because it will never end. There will never be peace. I personally seek my peace from my Heavenly Father. What about my child? What about Meredith? What should I expect for? What should I expect or look for as she gets older and could be looked at as effects from her childhood trauma? What should I expect for her trauma? Or should I expect that her trauma will lead her to drug and alcohol abuse? That she will one day be in and out of jail? And that she could one day ruin someone else's family? I'm the only person left to hold Meredith at night, answer her questions, and calm her fears. I do not, as a mother, ever want her to question that I have done everything in my power to pursue justice and promote change. I'm prepared to spend the rest of my life making sure yours, Stephen Wiggins, is miserable. However long that may take, you better believe I'm strong enough and I'm not going anywhere. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Honor, the state rests its proof. All right, for the purposes of the sentencing hearing, the state is now resting its proof. Uh, 